all of the years of racing, I was on a mechanical bike, be it Shimano or SRAM group sets, and they worked just fine. However, after somewhat recently upgrading to a DI2 equipped bike with disc brakes, I'm now a true convert. The best analogy that I've read regarding DI2 and electronic group sets is that gear changes become like a mouse click. Every change is crisp and accurate, and you never end up with frayed gear cables that twist around and break off and you end up having to play a game of operation or your local bike store has to do that for you. Of course, there's all that wiring that goes with DI2 and the setup of that, which the SRAM people always like to remind us about in the comments. But for me, I don't mind that at all. It allows me to get hands on with my bike, to try and problem solve, and I guess at the end of the day, it allows me to spend more money on more cables for what I need. Anyhow, what I'm saying here is that I'm a big fan of DI2, so much so that I'm going to convert my older giant TCR over to DI2 gearing, but I want to do it cheaper than full retail. So I've been keeping an eye on all the pre-owned bike parts groups over on Facebook, and I've come across quite a few sad looking group sets that people are trying to offload after they've crashed. But last week, this popped up. So advertised as Durace 9070 DI2 group set, 11 speed, it's previous generation, but fully compatible with what's on the market at the moment. Comes with a front and rear derailleur, a front and right levers, front and rear brake calipers, a seat post integrated battery, but they don't say which version it is, they didn't know. So I'm taking a punt on it being a DN110 or a DN100, which supports synchro shifting. If not, it'll come with a BTR1 or a BTR2, which I'll need to upgrade. Anyhow, it's all fully upgradable. We're good for that. Junction box A, which is an external three port junction box. Junction box B inside the bike, so four port for that. Four cables to connect everything internally. Uh, no crank set, no cassette, no chain, and no charger, but that's no worries. I've got all of those on the bike. Given the advert posted here included everything that I was after, I put the money down and took the punt. It came in at a few hundred dollars cheaper than the current Altegra offering. It is previous generation Durace, but it was worth a look. And here it is. It has arrived. Now I haven't even unboxed this. So let's go through this together. I'll be doing the unboxing. I'll check all the part numbers to see what I'm working with. I'll connect it all up to see if it works. And then we'll jump down to the Llama Lab, linking this all up to the new PC link that I picked up for just $50 the other day, bargain, to update all the firmware, run some diagnostics, and then I'll go about planning how we're gonna install this on the old TCR. Okay, here we go. Uh, so the first challenge is going to be getting the battery out. Uh, the guy said he was unable to remove the battery from the seat post, so we'll look at that in a moment. We shouldn't have any problems with that. There's some junction, there's another bit of plastic, there's a, oh, it looks like a lunch packet. Okay, we'll have a sandwich later on. Lots of plastic put in here, okay. Junction, cables, cables, cables. Excellent. Cable battery, okay. Battery cable, that was what that was about. All right, wrapped up like a fresh burrito. That's something in there. All right, that's the box done. <laughs> uh, what's for lunch today? Let's have a look. Brake calipers first. I already have brake calipers on the bike. Durace ones. But if these are in better condition, I will be using these. They're looking quite schmick. BR9000 back and front. Okay, we have the, oops, yep, of course those. Obviously the longer bolt for the front. Just a bit of uh, rub on the inside there, but that's no problems at all. You can't see that. So, okay, cool, happy with the brakes, but they're not part of what I'm up to today. One bit there. Definitely mechanical and very uninteresting. Ooh, what do we go, the burrito or we go the baked potato? Let's go the baked potato. What's in here for lunch? Well packaged, so I'm happy with that. I think we have some derailleurs. Rear derailleur, front derailleur. Okay, looking good. As pictured which is fantastic. FD9070-9070. All looking good, all the bolts and things intact. Cleanliness, not too bad. I'd give that about an eight out of 10. I'm sure Rides of Japan will be cringing, but we'll, we'll polish these up before we put them on the bike. So front derailleur, 
rear derailleur, we should have an RD, here we go, 90-70, rear derailleur, jockey wheels, not cracked, in good nick, cleanliness, oh, seven and a half, not too bad. That's all looking good. One thing to look for is the crashes through here and here. A few dinks, but nothing to uh, to report home on, I guess. Limit screws, high and low, looking good. The B tensioner is still in there. That's looking good. That's your rear derailleur. Okay. Time for this one. The one question I have is the quality of the hood rubber. Have they been used quite a lot? Is it loose fitting? Yeah, it's a little bit super light. A little bit loose fitting for the hood rubber. I might just order another pair of the hood rubbers, which can be easily replaced. So you can see there it's a bit, bit used, but that's fine. That's fine. If we peel these back, we should have the part numbers written somewhere on here, such as right there, ST. 90, 70. Um, bit of grit and grime in inside here. I'll be taking that out and giving it a scrub up, but possibly used for indoor cycling or somebody who sweats a lot. You can see the sweat marks on there and that sort of goo and gunk that comes with a lot of use. Cleanliness, I should have put some gloves on, but this is probably, I give this a better, well, let's have a look. I'll give these about a seven out of 10 for cleanliness, but that's okay. Cables there for uh, connections. Three cables here, one for the sprint shifter, which just duplicates the buttons that are already there, and one to connect it to the DI2 bus right-hand lever. Not looking good, but it is what it was sold as, so I'm happy with that. Scratches on these ones, let's have a look. A few dings, I don't mind. <laughs> Secondhand stuff being dinged up means I won't be the first one putting a scratch on it. That's okay. Looks good. Peel that back, so I'll be ordering some new hoods for those. Clicking mechanism. All looks to be intact, there we go. The wire hanging out the back. That's that and that. Junctions, let's have a quick look at those. Uh, okay, so nothing to report home here. This is the one that sits under the bottom bracket inside the frame there somewhere. So four port, one, two, three, four. Junction A, I'm assuming this is the three port under this stem junction, which will be the ba -ba -ba -ba, SMEW90A. Oof, SMEW90A. Button there. A PC link port there and charge port. Three ports there, cool. That's good. Actually, we'll pull that out because we're gonna be hooking all this up. You too, buddy. You're coming to the party. If you're waiting for the battery, so am I. Give us a moment. We may need to go get some uh, circlip pliers to get the battery out. We'll see what we're working with. First up, okay, RD cable. Thank you. That's in very good nick. Battery cable. Function A to B, it doesn't really matter. Cables are cables, it's just the length that are what they are. Okay, so junction A to B, so front of the bike down to the back of the bike, into that there. We'll get this all hooked up in a moment. Let's see if it works. And front D, everyone loves the front D. Another smaller cable, cool, okay. Conclusion, what was sold is what has arrived. Happy, happy, happy days. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought it would be too. The guy who sold this to me said, look, if I've got a chance and I can get that battery out, can I please return the seat post? No problems, we're all friends, it's all bikes. So I'll get this out, but what I will need though, if you can see that there, is a set of circlip pliers. Let me see if I can get the, uh, there we go. A set of circlip pliers in there to uh, remove the battery and fall, just pull that thing out. It's been pushed up there with probably a permanent battery holder. Anyhow. We'll leave that as is for now. 
Okay, so what do we need to get all of this hooked up and working on the bench? Well, we've got everything we need, but I will go and get my DI2 tool so I can plug these in correctly. Okay, here we go, my DI2 installation tool. Let's get everything just quickly plugged in to see if it's going to work. This will be a test to see if the battery has charged too. We have left lever. Snap. Now we want to put that down to the back of the bike, so we'll use this cable here. Done. There's the front end of the bike sorted. Down to the back end of the bike, we'll be joining up to the junction box here. Now you won't believe what has arrived, which is another part here, which I won't disclose my address on, but we'll, we'll unbox this halfway through the filming here. It's another part for this DI2 setup. So we have everything from the front down towards the back. We need a cable to the front derailleur. Done. Obviously the front derailleur will plug in. Goes up in here which is hard to get to. Done. Front derailleur and the rear derailleur will go this cable here. Snap. That's the battery for later. And the rear derailleur in this top part here. Okay. That out of the way, because that will move. So we have front of the bike, down to the rear of the bike, and we need the battery. Last component to plug in. Or possibly second last component to plug in because of what just arrived in battery in and assuming the system has charge I don't think we've got anything Well, we have zero charge. So what we'll need to do is plug this into the charger, wait a few hours and come back. Okay, here we go. My DI2 battery charger, which will flip up in here. And there we go, we are on the charge for that. So whilst that does its thing, charges the battery, we will open this other box. Because I'm pretty sure there's a part in here that we can hook up to this system. Oh, there we go. It's all coming together. Another satellite shifter picked up for less than retail because a good mate was selling it. Unused. He tells me, let's have a look at what's this. Oh, beautiful. It's all here. Everything we need to replicate my other DI2 bikes with the satellite shifter. Excellent. Okay, we'll put this over here until things are charged. We'll plug that in and we'll make sure everything works. Okay, after a quick trip to our local hardware store Bunnings, I now have the tool to remove the battery from here. So it's a circlip remover tool. One, two, ten dollars. Again, more excuses to spend more money on bikes. 
before I do that, let's remove it from here. Pull the cable out. And the circlip is in here, if you can see that. Out. Out come the washers. And out comes the battery. And the sad news is it's a BTR2 battery. So the older style battery, which does not support synchro shift, and given this is where the brains is, I will need to upgrade the battery at some stage. But for now, let's plug everything back in and get this fully charged. In. It has a bit of charge. Does it have enough for the front? Not enough for the front, so no, still needs a lot more charge in this before we do anything more with it to do the updates and things. Okay, come on, you get out of there. Okay, we'll leave that on the charge now. Okay, here we are a few hours later and the battery has had ample time to charge. Fully charged? Well, apparently not, but should be enough to test this unit out. I'm going to unplug that. Uh, we should be good to go. Uh, rear derailleur first, let's have a look. We're good and auto trim is taking place over here, which means this is working too. Fantastic, we are good to go. So mechanically working as expected with DI2. Mechanic, yes, you know what I'm trying to say. Okay, next thing, climbing shifter. We have a spare port over here. We can plug the climbing shifter in and see how everything goes. Probably wise to disconnect the battery before plugging anything new in. So into the second port on here, which I believe isn't the sprint shifter port, which duplicates the buttons. We will soon find out. In. We can leave that folded back. Always nice to have those spare. Okay, battery back in. And this should change this. <laughs> Oh, it's so much fun. Okay, cool. That is working as I wanted it to. The next thing I'm going to do, and I did mention this early on, is head down to the Llama Lab and connect all this up to the PC link. Now the SMPC E1 is the older version. That's why I picked it up so cheap. There is an E2 out that I believe is a little quicker and can do some more diagnostics of batteries. This should do what I need. A lot of what I'm about to do can be done with this, which is the battery charger, USB, you plug that end obviously into your junction box, that end into your PC, and you can do firmware updates and configuration. This can do the same thing, but this connects a little differently. This connects as a device on the DI2 bus. So there are additional cables involved here, um, and it also has a pass through if there are no spare ports. But there is a spare port over here that I will connect this to. We'll get it connected to USB, firmware update everything, and then we'll get it all firmware updated, and then I'll, I think I'll call it a day. This video is pushing out as it is. Okay, here we are in the Llama Lab. I have the group set in front of me, and I have the PC link connected down there via USB, but it is plugged into the left-hand shifter spare port as a component. So it's over to the e project. Now I'm not connecting a single device, which you can do with the PC link, very handy to do. I'm going to, have a look at the entire system here. Now this is the first time I've plugged in the PC link. It's all looking okay, sure. 
Aha, and as such, there's a new firmware for the PC link itself. We'll get that done, updating in progress. All right, let's speed this up. And we're complete. I love a good firmware update. Okay, connection check. Connect the bicycle, okay. Well, effectively, I've got a bicycle in front of me here. We're good to go. Unit recognition, okay. We wait for this to detect everything in the system and it should give us a full list of what's there. Am I using a sprinter switch? No, I'm not using a sprinter switch. The climbing switch isn't a sprinter switch. Oh, no. Interesting that it asked me that question though. Here we go. Number of recognized units. So we have the BTR, the battery, which will need an upgrade to support both multi-shift and the Bluetooth capabilities, which I want later on. We have the junction box, front derailleur, rear derailleur, left without sprinter switch, right without sprinter switch, and the climbing switch that we have there. And everything is yellow, indicating we pretty much need an update for the firmware. Done, 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 done. Everything needs an update. That one looks okay though. So everything is as it seems complete. <laughs> there we go. Latest firmware version for the following units are available. So for the battery, for the front derailleur, rear derailleur, left, pretty much everything gets an update. You all get an update. Let's get that done. ASAP, we hit update and four minutes 31 remaining, we speed this up too. And we're done. Everything is updated. Literally everything got an update except what the uh, Junction A didn't get an update. No, that was the only one that didn't get an update. Rock and roll. Cool. Okay, so complete on that. So I'm always one to do the latest firmware updates. Keep bleeding edge. Typically Shimano won't be too bleeding edge with their thing. Garmin Edge on the other hand, you might encounter some issues there, but Shimano stuff's usually pretty good for updates. So what that indicates is that whoever had this group set, first of all, didn't update it, probably didn't even care. It did what it did, but now it's going to do what it did better, we hope. It really depends what changed. Error check is something I haven't tried before. So let's select all and start diagnostics on all of this. And this is what I got the PC link for. Waiting for judgment. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it's a bit serious there. Uh, error check has been completed. A fault could not be found. Cool. And this is the exact reason why I bought the PC link. So I knew I was going to be picking up some secondhand or pre-owned DI2 equipment. And who knows if it's going to work or not. Or if I could bring it back to life or firmware updated or something like that. So psh, here we go. Now we're still waiting for judgment. I have no idea what that's doing or how long it's going to take. Still waiting for judgment. Do I have to click OK on that? Ah, I do. Ah, now I get this. How about that? I should have read, is there a manual? Uh, okay, diagnostics. Uh, hold down the adjustment button and release the adjustment button. So, okay, press and hold the button. Okay, a fault cannot be found. Okay, so that just diagnoses the button on that. Okay, cool. Red, okay, I've got it in front of me here. You probably just see that on the screen. Diagnostics in progress, is it illuminated? Yeah, red is yes. Is the green yes? Is the red illuminated if it's yes? Okay, cool. Front derailleur. Check that the crank set has a combination of gears and the small number of gears. Okay. Five seconds will be carried out. Check while shifting gears with the wheel install. Oh, okay, it's getting a bit tricky here that I haven't got everything installed, but we'll give it a shot. Why not? Let's see what it's all about. Until gear shifting starts, five seconds. One second, start. What are we up? Hey! It just simply sends a shift command. There we go, rotate crank arms. Yeah, let's pretend. Cool. Okay, that's good on that. Uh, rear derailleur, let me pick that up. <laughs> Here we go, this is going to shift somehow, somewhere. Let's go next gear, let's, let's get this party started. One second, start. Rotate the crank arms, okay, cool. So 10, nine, eight, seven, six, 
I'm going to have to speed this up, aren't I? And one. Does the gear match everything? Well, I guess so. It looks good to me. That's how that works. But we're going back. And I'll have to speed this up too. Done deal. <laughs> it's all good. Okay, a fault could not be found. Fantastic. Next up, what do we have here? The if when a sprinter shift is used, check will be performed with a sprinter switch. I'm not using a sprinter switch, no. Okay, so left. Countdown to 10 seconds. Okay, hold down X until release switch. Okay, release switch, complete. Next switch until... Okay, A, these do have the hidden buttons on top. Cool, we're all good. The fault could not be found. Uh, no, we're not using the sprint to switch. This would be the same for the right hand side, which I'm using with my left hand, just to confuse myself. Good. Next switch. Done. Good. Next switch and on the top. Hey, it's all good. Uh, and it's up and go for the next one. Uh, which switch? This one. Cool. Um, okay, we're done. That's a full diagnostics performed on the DI2 group set. First time I've run through that, hence why I was stumbling through everything, but that's pretty cool, pretty comprehensive, and make sure everything works as expected. We we'll complete on that, we are good. Now, from here, I need to sit down and work out where I wanna plug all of this in. Do I wanna use the junction A that I've got here with the three ports on it? This one here. Or do I go to the handlebar insert one that I use on all my other bikes? Well, my bike and my wife's bike has that. I will obviously have to upgrade the battery to the DN110, the DN100. I think the 110 is the one I'm after to support Bluetooth and the multi-shift, the synchro, which I do like on my other bike. So there's a few hundred dollars. But hey, all fun and games. And as I said, it's an excuse to spend some more money and more importantly, more time on my bike, getting my hands dirty, some hands on and building things that I made. Well, I put together anyway. So we'll leave it there for now. Apologies this one's been so long, but I do love tinkering with this stuff. I've picked this up on the cheap. Was it a bargain? Hmm. I think it's line ball, given I have to upgrade the battery to support Bluetooth and multi-shift. But anyway, I've got it now. It all works. And it gives me an excuse, again, to get more hands on with the bike. So expect more videos on this soon. As always, thanks for watching this one. And please hit subscribe to support this channel. We'll see you soon.